Hey guys, this is Frozen Things Thieves here and welcome back to another movie review and today I'm going to be doing a review on Batman 1989. So um, Batman 1989 uh, is the uh, first uh, um, legit uh, live action of Batman a blockbuster. We did get a live action Batman movie with uh, um, Adam West but this one feels like pretty much the feels more like a legit movie than not uh, that one and is uh, directed by Tim Burton who I got interesting things to say about and stars Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, Kim Basinger, Robert Wool, um, Billy D. Williams, Michael Goh, um, Jerry Hall, uh, Lee Wallace, uh, etc. And so Batman uh, 1989 uh, tells the story of uh, of you know just the original story of uh, Bruce Wayne whose uh, parents were killed uh, killed as a as a child and he pretty much uh, takes out the the, the King Crusader's Batman and his uh, he begins his war and crime with uh, the first uh, major um, villain being a jo being a Joker and he must um, stop him from uh, getting his hands on uh, on uh, Vicky uh, so yeah that's pretty much it for the that's all I have to say for the plot. So yeah, I totally cannot wait to get nuts in this movie. So I'm sure y'all know why I'm uh, reviewing Batman 1989. Like I'm sh like you know I haven't really explained to uh to you all about how, uh, that I'm reviewing the Supergirl uh movie and show the thing up to the Flash. I haven't explained this, but when it comes to reviewing the Michael Keaton Batman movies, I think it's more a little more obvious uh, to you guys that uh, uh a little more obvious that um I am actually reviewing this in uh, preparation for the flash since we all know uh the reason that we are going to see the batman no no, no i mean the flash it's not because of the flash himself but rather because of michael keaton's uh, batman uh, being in this yeah i mean who knew we would ever uh see uh batman who knew um you would ever see michael keaton's batman again uh, back at the big street after like almost 40 years i think like Almost, I mean, like, but definitely a couple of decades, like, like, like even longer than, uh, um, than, uh, um, well, I'm sure, um, then when Tobey Maguire came into No Way Home, I'm, like, Return to No Way Home, uh, yeah, it's, I, I totally cannot wait to see it. I'm seeing, uh, The Flash on Saturday at the, um, I don't know what time though, uh, yeah, but I'm seeing it on Saturday, and yeah, um, I already know what sim I'm yeah, going to. I'm kind of prepared. I just don't know what time I'm seeing. It depends on the situation, but yeah. Um. So. So yeah. Um. Now with this movie, yeah, it, it's very interesting to see uh, Tim Burton uh, direct a uh, superhero movie because uh, we all know he's uh, pretty much uh, more um, known for his uh, um, family-friendly horror movies, like his uh, classic horror movies. Is the. Uh, the classic horror movies, yeah, and I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. Uh, Tim Burton's kind of a mixed bag of a director, uh, if I gotta be honest. Uh, there are some amazing films that that, that, that he made. Um, some amazing films that he made, you know, um, like uh, Beetlejuice, which is uh, a top tier uh, Tim Burton movie. Um, and uh, all, I also in like films like Edward Scissorhands and, you know, some of his are classics, but um, when it comes to his horror classics, that be just be just my favorite. Is uh, but then he makes films like Dumbo and uh, he makes uh, garbage like uh, Dumbo and Alice in Wonderland. Like he makes those garbage uh, live action remakes. And, but his latest achievement is actually a TV show. His yeah um, Wednesday yeah Wednesday is hands down the best uh, thing that Tim Burton has ever done, and it's not and it's. Uh, no competition about that. Uh, Tim, um, dumb. No, no, no. Wednesday is pretty much uh, Tim Burton's. Uh, not only is this uh, Tim, uh, Tim Burton's uh, comeback, but uh, Tim Burton's comeback. But it is uh, also um, like pretty much the crowning achievement of uh, Tim Burton. It is a uh, peak Tim Burton, and no other uh, work that Tim Burton has done come close. Yeah, you probably know that if you know me so well, you know. Um, that Wednesday is a show that is uh, close to me. Like it is one of the best shows ever. Like, and uh, it is a show that yeah that is dear to my heart. And uh, yeah, one of the greatest shows. And Jenner and that show made Jenner Ortega become one of the uh, greatest actresses of all time. And 
and it, we're even getting a Jenna Ortega in a, in a new Tim Burton movie called Deal Choose 2. Uh, yeah, I am hyped for that film. I uh, predict that Deal Choose 2 would be uh, the best Tim Burton movie. But as of now, um, like as of right now, uh, my favorite Tim Burton movie is actually this one I'm, I'm reviewing here. Yeah, Batman 1989 is my favorite uh, Tim Burton movie. This movie is such a masterpiece and it is, an, it is an instant classic and I think this movie is a little underappreciated because I don't hear anyone talk about this movie uh, as a masterpiece uh, in the same conversation as the Dark Knight trilogy or you know, uh, you know those movies. Now yes, I would agree this is not as good as the Dark Knight trilogy. There are way better um, Batman movies than this. I would say this is on the same level of greatness as uh, the um the Lego Batman movie like that devil it's no Dark Knight trilogy um and but yeah Batman I, I, I mean the more I rewatch this movie it just keeps getting better and better and better and better yeah I rewatched this movie last year leading up to um the Batman the Robert Pattinson Matt Reeves Batman movie and now uh, and um now I'm uh, rewatching now I'm this one in, in preparation for seeing uh, Michael Keaton's uh, Return in the Flash uh, movie and uh, yeah this movie is just incredible um now um yes this I wouldn't say this is one of my favorite superhero movies it's not even my favorite movie of its respective year cuz uh Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade my favorite Indiana Jones movie came out in that same year I will absolutely and gladly review um in the angels but batman 99 is uh i mean maybe my favorite superhero movie of the 1980s i mean is there anything uh that's uh actually like really good because let's be real the, the 1980s uh, uh decade was um 90s decade was uh terrible for uh like it's probably the worst decade for superhero movies like and also in the 90s but this one oh my goodness i just read it on supergirl uh just recently, um, like very very recently, like a few hours ago, and and uh, this movie all, and this uh, decade also had films like Superman Four: The Quest for Peace, Howard the, Superman Three, Howard the Duck, all those movies. Like the only good movies, that superhero movies that came out this decade is uh, Superman Two and Batman, and and Superman Two isn't even a perfect movie. There are some like flaws so here, so therefore. Yeah, Batman is uh, definitely the best uh, superhero movie of the decade, of the of its respective decade. Yeah, where do I even start with this? Yeah, Michael Keaton's uh, Batman um is uh, excellent. Now, is he my favorite Batman? No, I mean he's probably my uh, fourth uh, favorite Batman uh, behind uh, next to uh Robert Pattinson, um Christian Bale, and Ben Affleck. Uh, but I would say this movie is probably better than than any of the uh. Um, bad of like a uh, Batman movies as movies. I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. Batman vs Superman. Um, but uh, I mean Batman vs Superman. Um, Justice League. The uh, Justice League. Um, I'm gonna rewatch that series Justice League to see which is better this or to see if it's better than this one. But right now this is better in my opinion. Um, and you know some others. I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. Uh, but I mean, yeah, Michael Keaton and Batman has better content. But I I feel like uh. Ben Affleck just does, does a slightly better job as, uh, um, as, uh, well, the, the Game Crusader. Uh, Michael Keaton's uh, Batman is still excellent, and one of my favorite performances from this. And, and, and Michael Keaton had some excellent uh, work throughout with, you know, uh, Vulture in Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, he, was also, he was also in Spotlight, but by far my favorite Michael Keaton performance is in, uh, Birdman, the, the lead role of Birdman, just an um, excellent Oscar uh, worthy performance in that film. But Batman is uh, certainly one of his best. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he um, does absolutely feel like a Batman and, and feel like a, a comic accurate Bruce Wayne. And uh, and Batman, uh, like Batman's uh, suit in this uh, movie is um, amazing. One of my favorite the uh, Batman suits. Uh, period. I also enjoy uh, Vicky Vale, um, the the uh, lead female character, and I mean, uh, I love uh, I love the uh, chemistry between um, between him and uh, Batman, and, and, and you really root for Batman to save uh, Vicky from uh, Joker, um, from uh, the 
from uh, Joker. And um, and let me tell y'all right now, Joker, Jack Nicholson's Joker is uh, the standout. The continues to show why Joker is the uh, definitive uh, DC villain and the definitive Batman villain. I mean, we got so many interpretations of Joker throughout. We got one uh, failed uh, in in interpretation with um, with um, uh, Jared Leto. I think Cesar Romano from the um, Adam West Batman is a, such an overrated Joker in my opinion. But then we got you know, masterful Jokers like this one, and uh, and also um, and the two uh, superior Jokers, the two um, crowning jewels of Jokers, Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix. I would say Jack Nicholson is my third favorite Joker behind. Uh, next to uh, Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix, so, I mean his Joker is just uh, so. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, clearly tell that that like Jack Nicholson clearly has uh, so much fun uh, playing the role of uh, Bat uh, 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 of the Joker, and I mean Joker is always supposed to be fun. He does everything that, that he does everything that that Joker is supposed to do, and unlike the other Joker adaptations, they actually well besides uh, Jared Leto. Um, but even though they explained it poorly in Suicide Squad, um, they actually explained the why he became the Joker. I still prefer the Rocky Phoenix, the Arthur Fleck uh, Joker, the original story. Basically, him just you know, just becoming a clown, uh, um, because to um get to get back at society, to be able to give society a payback uh, by becoming a criminal like that. Um, I I prefer that kind of origin story, but I mean. I also, but I do like the original story of him just you know drowning in in, in a pool of chemicals and then just straight up becoming the Joker. Um, and my God, and my God, the dialogue in this movie is uh, excellent. You know, so many like like this movie has some of the most iconic uh, quotes. Uh, and so um, you know um, whenever you think about you know Batman, uh, this Batman movie, the first thing that comes into your head is um. God, the first thing that comes into your head are the lines, you know, like, um, you know, like, uh, tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Uh, moonlight, yeah, that is an iconic uh, Joker quote. Uh, one of the best Joker quotes. Uh, and you even got an iconic quote from Batman himself. Well, technically, he said that when he was Bruce Wayne. Uh, and, um, um, and this is a line that's going to be used in the, in the Flash as we uh, saw in the second trailer. Well, the second or third trailer. Basically, he said, you want to get nuts, uh, let's get nuts, yeah. yeah that, the line is um, just excellent. Um, the line is um, excellent, yeah. Um, and uh, I am totally nuts about this movie. And I'm nuts about my excitement for The Flash. As I keep getting more excited for it, the more I uh, think about it. And, and yeah, um, this, and uh, Tim Burton's style in this movie does fit. I mean... It really does feel like a pure Tim Burton movie because as uh, as much as this is a Batman movie, you, you can clearly see Tim Burton's style to it. As uh, there will be times in the movie where it will get dark and bossy and it become kind of a uh, horror like movie, you know, with uh, Batman just you know coming into this, uh, you know, just you know when Bat you know Batman just try making jump scares and you hear the score in the background like like a horror like score. Yeah, that is pure Tim Burton right there. It is excellent. And even the action scenes are awesome. Yeah, even the action scenes are um excellent uh, as well. Um and but probably one of my favorite things about this film is it is the music. I mean, this definitely has one of my favorite the uh, um this has one of my favorite the uh, Batman themes. Of course, we got some excellent Batman themes as well. You know, like uh, um you know like um the Christopher Nolan Batman uh, theme. Like dun 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 dun, dun, dun. and even like uh, the the Robert Pattinson Batman, which is my favorite Batman theme, you know. Dun 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 dun. dun. But my for, by far my favorite the uh, Batman theme. No no no, not my favorite. No, I I said the Robert Pattinson uh Michael Giacchino Batman theme is my favorite, but. I gotta get props to this uh, theme as well. I forgot who scored it, but whatever. I mean. Um, I forgot who scored it, um, Danny Elfman, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I remember it's, it's Danny Elfman, uh, but yeah, um, basically, like, you know, his score is basically, like, uh, the, the, the Batman theme in this, like, dun, 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 yeah, what an excellent, and, and it, sound, it, it sounds like something you'd expect in a Tim Burton movie, so, yeah, I guess it's all I gotta say, I don't have a lot to say about this one, but, 
because it, it's pretty much just a more of a straightforward just Batman story. There isn't a, a lot to analyze about, but yeah. But even with that, Batman 1989 is such a masterpiece, and with a decade of, of, of some of the worst superhero movies to ever put, like the super the the night the 1980s a decade definitely ended with a bang on this one. Um, it is um certainly a, a, an amazing Batman movie, but um and, and a classic. Michael Keaton is such an amazing Batman, uh, and Jack Nicholson's Joker is a menace, a real menace, and he really does um act like the Joker. And I say he's actually tied with the uh, Norman. Wait, what, what's his name? Jack Durant is my favorite. Uh, um, from The Shining is my favorite uh, uh, Jack Nicholson uh, performance. So. And yeah, um, yeah, this movie has some amazing stuff. You know, it has everything, you, um, everything you need in a Batman movie while feeling like a, a straight up Tim Burton movie. So yeah, um, this movie is 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 just amazing, simply amazing. And yeah, so um, and this is my second favorite movie, 1989, with number one being um, number one being um, being uh, Indiana Jones: Last Crusade. Oh yeah, I actually know that there's also The Little Mermaid which came out this year. I'm actually gonna, I actually can't really decide which is better, this or The Little Mermaid. But actually, no, this is better, yeah. The Little Mermaid. And, um, so yeah, with that said, I'm gonna give Batman 1989 a 10 out of 10. One of the weaker 10 out of 10 movies though, but still excellent. So, so for my review of Batman 1989, uh, what is your opinion on this uh, movie? Uh, Dear Dan, is this your favorite Batman movie? And is Michael Keaton your favorite Batman? Or are you with me that there are better Batman movies and Batman actors? Uh, even though this one is a, a top tier one. Um, comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for my review of uh, its sequel of uh, Batman Returns. Uh, bye guys.